What's going on everybody? I'm Jason. This is Mabel. This is Presley. This is Tennessee Mountain Homestead. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to get back working on Mabel's tractor. And what we have on the menu today is a transaxle clean. We're going to put some new uh, fresh gear oil in it. We're going to lock the differential and she's going to get new tires. Stay tuned. So as you can see, we've got the tractor suspended by two engine uh, stands. And this morning I came out here and I've already taken the transmission out of the tractor. I also took out all the mechanisms that used to make the deck go up and down. So we're gonna jump right into the transmission. It's sitting over here on the workbench and I believe it's an MST 205. That means it's got five forward speeds, one reverse. The first thing we need to do is take off the snap ring and try to get this pulley off. I did spray it with WD-40 earlier, and I also heated it up, but that was hours ago, and I've been letting it sit. So we're gonna reheat it, we're gonna put it in the hydraulic press, and hopefully, it'll come right off. Will it? So as I was just saying, the first thing we're gonna do is get this pulley off. I just know from previous experiences with these transmissions, and anything actually with a shaft and a pulley that's been underneath a lawnmower for a number of years, it's not gonna come off easy. So I had to readjust and put the smallest tips I have for my snap ring pliers in here. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the snap ring, just like that. All right, we're also gonna get this thing out of the way. I've already loosened it up. This is the shifter. So I'm just gonna take out this bolt right here. It was a 3 8 head. Put these pieces off to the side. I took a chisel and I marked the orientation of how this sits. There's a little T here for top, but what I mean is I made a dent in the steel right there and I made a little dent there on the shaft. So when I reassemble it, no matter if it gets turned or not, I know which way it goes back on. Now we got that stuff off of there in this little washer too. The next thing we're gonna do is get it set up in this press. We're gonna press the pulley off of it so that we don't damage it by beating on it or nothing. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and reheat it. I heated it up pretty hot with a map cast torch several hours ago. But we're gonna reheat this thing and then get it set up. So it put up a fight for sure, and we didn't catch it on camera, but it just broke. Not physically broke, but the, the fusion between the rust and the shaft, that busted and it went down. So now it's just gonna press out. I got a feeling that we just jammed the socket, in the, pulley. the socket is press fit now into the pulley because I didn't get a small enough one. But that's all right, we'll get it back out. Let's press it the other way and bend the pulley back straight, huh? All right, so in my infinite wisdom, I managed to wedge the 7 16 deep socket into the old pulley. The pulley is basically destroyed, it's all warped. We're gonna have to, now we're forced to pulley swap it with Stefan's wheel horse pulley. That means more work underneath the tractor, but that's all right. I wasn't gonna do it, but now we have to. So, I now have a smaller deep socket, and we're pushing, oh, well you missed all the fireworks. It was popping and snapping, and I had to have my guard up. Anyway, like I was just saying, this pulley's finished. I'm either gonna have to get another one the same size, or go to the wheel horse pulley. I think that'll give her just a couple miles an hour more speed. And hopefully the work we have to do under the tractor is minimal. Let's get into it. All right guys, 
Here's an update. We were just looking over these pulleys selections that we have. I've got a seven inch with a weldable hub. And I'm looking at other pulleys because the wheel horse pulley is not gonna work. At least not without filing out that keyway. The keyway, I guess, is for a different size key on the, on the wheel horse transmission shaft or a Woodruff key, whatever that is. So that's not gonna happen. Now, if I use the seven inch pulley, I'm gonna have to cut off some material from the hub in order to make it so it's the same height as the stock hub. It would have to go down about three eighths of an inch. And if that doesn't work, we might just have to go to tractor supply or something and find a ready-made pulley that is close to this size or maybe I think seven inch would be probably the, the, the smallest I could go without having to really drastically change the underneath the structure of the tractor for the belt guides and all that. So that's where we're at with this. This is, we can worry about the pulley later, honestly. We're gonna start getting into this, into this transmission. We're gonna get it opened up and do what we came here to do. Now, Mabel had to go in the house. She has some business to attend to. So we're kind of out here without her. It's gonna slow us down, but she'll be back more in a minute. All right, so we're back. I'm gonna get ready to open up this case. Now, what I'm gonna do is break all these loose with a wrench first to make sure they're not stuck or rusted or corroded. Just feel, feel them out. Okay, so I have to go around the whole thing, but I'd also like to show when I open up cases and things like this, I like to draw a general outline of it freehand. It doesn't have to be highly detailed, but as you can see, it's, I'm gonna take the bolts out and I'm gonna put them in the correct orientation. Now I know that a lot of these bolts are gonna be the same exact length, but still just for peace of mind, I'm gonna put them right back where they came from when I put this thing back together. So this little cardboard aided uh, diagram is gonna help me do that. And there are two bolts on the bottom side of the transmission. That's what I have here written on there. So we're gonna loosen up all these by hand like I just said. Then I'm gonna use the impact and zip them all out faster so I don't have to do them all by hand. All right, so all the bolts are out. As you can see, there's my diagram with my bolts right where they belong. That's gonna help us out later. So, this is the brake mechanism, and it does work, it's just a little crusty. When we put it back together, we're gonna have to clean the parts and pieces and the pistons. There was some wood crammed in there, I guess some old sticks or something that got in it. But, the mechanism seems fine and the brake pad or the brake shoe or whatever it is, is still good. And remember, this is 23 years old, and I have a feeling this case has probably never been opened. So the next thing we're gonna do is I, I think, we're gonna do some research, guys. I think we take the bottom off and the top, that we flip it over upside down with these shafts and things facing down and the bottom of it comes off because the shift, the shifter detent and all that stuff and the input gear, all that stuff is snap, ring, snap ringed into the case. And if I remember correctly, we take the bottom off first, but we'll make sure of that and we'll come back in a minute. All right, guys. So it's been a little while, but all the bolts are out, like I said in the last clip. And what you want to do is get a couple of smaller uh, flathead screwdrivers and find a place in the case. There's usually little spots on the back and you'll see there'll be a spot for like something like that to fit in sometimes. I don't know, I made it look way too easy, but I started in the front. It actually just started coming loose on its own up front. It was starting to leak a little bit of oil. And then I worked it, I left the screwdriver in here and I got another one once there was an opening. I, pr I pried it a little bit here and then I came around the back. And I think they use on these a little bit of RTV or some kind of a sealant from the factory. It was the same way on my MST-206. Because in the back, especially where there's a big mating surface back here, if you look right here, there's a there's a big web of aluminum on these case halves, and there's a bunch of sealant on here, and this is where it's really stuck. 
and you can hear it when you get your screwdriver in here. Like here's one of those little slots, but I worked it here and I could hear it cracking, not the metal, but I could hear the, the sealant or the RTV or whatever they use separating. And then it came apart all at once. So now I'm pretty sure I can just lift this off and now we have access to the inside. And I'm thankful to see that like on my MST-206, the factory used gear oil. Because I have a 1983 John Deere 111 with a Peerless 801, and that transmission had a bunch of bentonite grease in it from the factory, which becomes like wax. It becomes hard, and it was tough to get out. But this here, this is the first time I've opened it. Actually, it's in pretty good condition. I see that it has the places for the bearings, and I happen to have a couple bearings left over from my MST-206. I had to buy a four pack from Amazon. I believe I've got the bearings that fit in here, and that'll give it a little bit more strength. Not that it needs it, 25, 23 years old. But we're gonna put them in there if they'll work. Otherwise, we're not gonna take like every gear set apart on this. I don't see the reason to. Nothing's broken. This transmission works in all the gears. It shifts easy. I have no reason to believe the shift keys are broken or anything. So the only thing we're gonna focus on, we'll take the gear sets out, the, the shafts, we'll leave them intact. And then we're gonna re-clean the case halves. We're gonna look at locking the diff, and then we're gonna put it back together and fill it back up. All right, real quick, I looked on my shelf and my inventory of spare parts, and I did have the bearings. I bought a four pack back about a year ago when I did the MST-206 and the Craftsman lawnmower. And I just took that transmission apart, cleaned it, and I did not weld the diff on that since it's just a lawnmower. But the model is 6203-12-2RS. And these bearings, like I said, I bought a four pack from Amazon. And what you wanna do is they should fit in this this opening on the case halves. The bearing will slide over the axle shaft and it'll fit right in there. And when you put it back together, the bearing will take the load of the axle because right now the axle is just riding on aluminum with a thin film of gear oil between it, which is fine, no big deal. But we're gonna do the upgrade. And on these, these are uh, sealed bearings. They have grease already inside of them, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little pick or something and take off the seals on the sides of the bearings so that the gear oil can get inside. All right, getting back to the transmission. First thing we're gonna do is take out the differential. There. Stefan's standing by with a big, empty, clean, Saucepan. There we go. We're going to take these things out, hose them down. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is just start removing these gear sets. And like I said, I'm not going to disassemble these things completely. Just gonna set them off to the side because we're gonna clean all this goop out of the like the old gear oil with the with it's probably got a few like you know fine metal shavings in it metal metal flake if you would so we're gonna clean that out we probably we'll probably spray these with some degreaser and just rinse them off and then let them, let them dry good but otherwise I gotta figure out how to get the shift, the shift fork off of this thing. And then we're gonna just, like I said, we're gonna clean the case and drain that oil into something. On this particular transmission, it has this extension on the gear selector. I don't know how, that's, how that extension, if it's just pressed over a square that's down low, similar to this on the end of it, down here, I don't know. But getting this gear set out 
requires taking that out, the gear selector shaft and the shift key, shift arm. So I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to beat on it. I don't want to create more problems than I've already got with the pulley being warped and destroyed. So I'm going to leave that gear set in here. Now, I also know from past experiences with these things that there's a snap ring on the input gear and that's not hard to get out. So I'm going to take this snap ring out of here. Just like that. Put it over here with the other stuff so it doesn't get lost. And the input gear will just pull up. There's a washer underneath it. But the reason I want to take this off is because there's needle bearings. Here's the input gear shaft. There's needle bearings in that input gear shaft that I want to be able to grease and clean out. All right, guys, I know in the last clip I was saying I'm not going to take this gear set out. I can't leave well enough alone. So I got this out inadvertently by just working this shaft back and forth and it seems like the whole thing is going to be able this I thought that this shaft was pressed on over maybe like another square drive piece on the end of a shorter stub but this is all one piece it's just really rusted and I've already started with sandpaper and just cleaning it up and it's already a lot easier to move and I think that it just it's, the whole thing is just going to go out that way so I, I was able to bump it enough. I used a rubber mallet and I was, I was bumping it back and forth and it's moving and it went up that way enough that this gear set was able to come out. Okay. Now I'm going to keep cleaning the shaft of this gear selector and I'm going to try to get it out because I want to be able to clean this case and also it was really tough to turn a few minutes ago. Like it's got rust or something inside where it's, where it's just riding in there. So I want to clean all that and uh, I'll let you all know. See, I can, I can move it already about a quarter of an inch. It just, when it gets to where it was rusty, I can't move it. So that's telling me I just got to clean this and polish it up some more and it should slide right out. I'll let you know. I'll be back in a minute. All right, y'all. So... This does in fact, it's all one piece and it slides out. It has an O-ring on it. So be careful if you try to heat it up or anything, which you shouldn't have to. I tried and I didn't make it crazy hot because I thought there might be, and there is. There's an O-ring in there, you don't want to melt that. But there's really, there's really no reason to put heat on this. I thought, like I said a couple clips ago, that this extension was just sitting over top of something else which doesn't even make sense now that I look at it, but polished this up nice with some sandpaper, cleaned all the debris off of it, used a greasy rag, wiped it, and it slides in and out of this thing like no problem. So if you're looking, we looked on YouTube trying to find someone who took one of these apart, couldn't find anything. We didn't look all night or nothing, but if you're looking how to do it, that's how it's done to get this piece out. On other models, I haven't had one with an extension like this yet. On other models, that piece is not so exaggerated. It's all the way down and just sits proud of the case where your gear selector arm goes. This one happens to be way up high. So, no problem, right? Moving forward, I'm gonna bring this in the house. Now the neat, I got the input shaft out, like I said. There's needle bearings in there, which I, ha I think have to be pressed in. I've never messed with those. These don't seem like they're bad. There is a seal on the top and there's an o a rubber seal on the bottom. I'm gonna leave those in place and just tell Stefan 
he's in there in the in the kitchen in the not the kitchen the washroom sink he's in there washing this stuff all these parts he's doing the differential right now I'm gonna bring him this and just let him know about these o-rings well that one just comes out easy so put that right over there learning as I go right the top one doesn't just pop right out I'm not even gonna like force it I'll let just let it ride so yeah the case is basically empty all that's left is the needle bearings and a seal up here on the top which I don't have the parts to replace and I ain't going there when we put that back together I'll put either I'll put some bent night grease in there I can see some old grease in there now so I might try to reach in there with a pick or something to clean that out but with these these gear sets like I said I'm not taking these things completely apart I have before all it is is you got the, your shift key that goes inside each of these gear sets your shift keys there's one on each side of this transmission some of the 820s I think have four shift keys these have two I'm not taking all that apart I'm just not I'm not gonna go back and do it even after I say I'm not gonna do it like I did with that but I'm just gonna probably spread this with some brake parts cleaner get the the residual grease that was in here off and I'm gonna leave these alone no point in taking those apart they're healthy there's no broken teeth it all worked when I took it apart so case halves clean we're gonna weld the differential when we come back next all right so Stefan's in there washing the upper case half I've got the lower case half here he already washed this one my gear sets are over here the differential pieces are scrubbed and clean and they're actually in the oven so when you guys if you're doing the same thing you just got to remember that when the manufacturer put this together they did use some sort of a sealant on the case halves and you want to get a razor blade and just make sure all that's going to be taken off when you reassemble it you don't want this stuff on there so that's what I'm going to do right now while I'm waiting for Stefan to come back with the other one. And then as soon as both halves are clean, we're going to start the process of, we're going to look at how we're going to lock that differential up. All right, so finally we're back over here at the welding table. I got the case half cleaned. I got the gear sets cleaned. Didn't take them apart, but I sprayed them with brake parts cleaner and they're over there sitting in paper towels draining. They're, they, they're nice and clean. Nothing going on with that. So now we're trying to get this thing locked up. I did watch a couple videos. I have not personally locked up one of these style differentials yet. I know there's different ways to do it. And I'll be honest, just getting this thing to go back in here without welding or anything, just how it is, you gotta really like finagle it and put it in there. And that's just laying it in there like this when you got the seals on there and everything else, it just becomes a headache. So I'm kind of skeptical. I don't really want to weld this thing and make it all one piece. Plus I'm afraid it's going to warp and I won't be able to close the cover. I know there's ways around it, but what I think I'm going to do is very similar to what I did on my Peerless 2300 and my John Deere, which is weld in the next gear between the teeth on the next gear tooth from where the tooth from the spider gear is going to try to mesh with the tooth on the axle gear and fill those voids with weld and that's it I don't think I'm gonna weld the spider gears to the shaft because in mine I had the issue where I did that and the shaft just sheared the weld didn't break the shaft broke I don't think this this particular lawnmower is gonna see the amount of torque mine did but I don't know and like I said, putting this thing, getting this thing back in here, it just, it just scares me. I don't want to, this thing to warp or move and I'm not going to be able to get it in. So I think just welding it between the teeth, it's held up great on mine so far. I do clutch, I've done clutch drops. I've put it under a lot of pressure. Climbed up things and it's been fine how it is. And the shaft on mine's not welded either. You can go back on the videos where I covered that. I did originally do it and then I had to take another shaft and spider gears from another 2300. I put them back in there but I didn't weld them. Just the axle gears have weld in between the teeth. Now I do have independent play in between my back tires on my tractor but it's still locked. 
they both turn at the end of the day. I think I'm gonna go that route on this one. All right guys, so I'm gonna do this a little bit at a time because it's very confusing. With these, you just I just don't wanna get the gear teeth crossed up. It's hard enough to put it back together without welding it, just as is. And getting it to lay flat in the case and go back in there easily. So what I did, I marked a line with a Sharpie down one side of the axle shaft and I marked what teeth I want to weld between. So I'm going to do this one, this one, two on this shaft. I'm going to put it back together. Make sure I'm good. Mark another two. Take it apart. Weld it outside away from the case so no spatter or anything gets in there. It's all over here, not in that case. So like I said, I'm going to weld this one, put it back together, and do it little by little. Alright, so I got the first two gear teeth welded. You can see right here. It's welded in between those teeth and on this side in between these two teeth. And now when it tries to rotate, it can't. It can't mesh. So the challenge with doing it like this now is going to lie. And I can't, on this side, I can't fill these teeth all the way to the top like I did that side. I've got to do it much shallower, about halfway up. So I'm going to attempt that. And even if I, I don't get it, if it's too much, I can always take the grinder and, and cut a little bit out. So we'll see what happens with that. Let me get this side out next. All right, so this is my last two teeth I'm welding between. I've already done three sides. This is my last one. And something I like to do is preheat with a torch where I'm gonna be welding. Get it pretty hot and it'll help to clean up any residual oil residue that might be in the surface of the metal that you didn't get off with the soap. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and I think we're gonna be locked up good enough. So I'm all done welding with this and if you come in here and check it out, I welded between the teeth right here right here. I welded halfway up these teeth because they're these mesh closer here and here and the same on this side. These are welded a lot. I piled the weld up in between those teeth a lot on here so these can never mesh and then on this side I welded about halfway up the teeth. I didn't want to get too carried away because I was afraid that it wasn't going to mesh back in but everything spins free it's back together and that's our locker on this one it's I can always get those gears off the snap rings will come off I can take this whole thing apart it's not welded together it can't warp it still has its play in between the splines the gears aren't welded together so like I was saying before this works great on my 2300 it's not maybe it's not the best thing I wish I had a straight axle and all that but I don't it's the next best thing to me. It's held up so far. I have yet to see the gears break over this. So that's what I did here. And I did watch some videos where guys are welding all this stuff together. I did not weld the spider gears to the shaft because on mine that broke. I don't know. So I'm gonna go with this for now. And if something happens, which it's not, where I will it halfway up the gears, if that ever starts to wear, it's just gonna rotate a little bit more. And it's going to come into contact with where I really welded the crap out of it, where they're not starting to mesh yet. And this whole thing is just going to, it's probably going to stay locked up forever, especially with Mabel Grace driving it. And if anybody else hops on it and takes it through a mud hole out by the barn, so what? This thing is not going to ever be, unless major modifications, it's never going to see the same kind of abuse that some mowers might. So that's what we went with, guys. That's our locker on this deal. It took a little bit more time than I thought it was going to, but if you look here, it's locked up. And once that axle is sandwiched in between the case halves, it's really going to be locked up because now when I when I twist it, it wants to it 
it wants to pick up on the on the bull gear. But once it's once it's sandwiched in there with the bearings and everything, it ain't going nowhere. That's a done deal. So we're gonna reassemble this thing more in a minute. So going back to the bearings, I've already taken them off. I got one in here, as you can see, it's sitting in the case. What I'm gonna do is you just take something sharp, take off the seal. That way the bearings are exposed. They got grease in them right now, but that'll that'll wash away. That'll blend in with the oil that's gonna go in here. And they sit right down in those slots. I don't know if it never needed it in the last 23 years this thing's existed, but we're gonna put it on there now. All right, so reassembly. With these transmissions, uh, it's, well, the 820, which is one over there, they've got a sealed bearing on the input shaft. On these smaller transmissions, the MSTs, like these, the 206, this is the 205, the input bearing, like I was saying earlier, has these needle bearings inside. There's one on the top, there's a set of needle bearings up here, and there's a set down at the bottom side before it enters the case. So there's two bearings, two sets of bearings in there, and there's a space between them. And they're sealed by O-rings. There's an O-ring on the bottom side and there's a seal on the top here. Trouble is, whatever you put in here, that's it. I don't think that any or much of the gear oil inside the transmission is ever gonna get in there and, and lubricate those bearings. So what you've got is a pair of needle bearings with the same old grease that you put in there is gonna be in there forever. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this red and tacky Lucas, and I'm also gonna put in a little bit of uh, oil stabilizer. I've done that before. I haven't had any issues yet. I put the red and tacky in there, and then before I put the O-ring, I drip some stabilizer, some Lucas, down in there and then put the O-ring. So it has some sort of some sort of uh, viscosity, if that makes sense. But I also I work the shaft in and out. So I put a little bit of grease. I use my my pinky finger. You want to make sure that the the grease is in between the sets of bearings. So that way it'll have like a little reservoir. And I put the shaft in there, twist it around, work it, you know. You want to make sure those bearings are packed because I, I took out all the old stuff. I made sure to clean it out real good. And I used Bray Parts cleaner. I know it was clean. So it's looking pretty good now. I think we're going to go with that. I'm just going to put a little, one more one more dose in there. Colt's got the got the stabilizer stuff I like to use. But I wiped out my bench here. Everything's clean. Shouldn't have any dirt, any contamination. So set that there. I've got a couple of couple washers that go on here before I install it permanently. So I got the shaft back in there, and like I said, I'm gonna put a little bit of Lucas before I put my oil seal on there, my, my O-ring. And that Lucas will get down in there and mix with the grease. And hopefully those bearings will never have any issues for a while. All right, I got my O-ring back on there. I got the washer that goes between the gear and the case on there, and I just put my snap ring back on there. So this whole assembly should be good and lubed. We're going to move on. Now Stefan and I, it was not easy, especially if you're adding these bearings, to get this to go together 
and then get it in the case with these bearings and these seals in place, it was definitely a, definitely a daunting task. So I want to put everything back together in this. So what we're going to do is put this case half over this, flip it over and take this one back off. But first, we got to put the shifter key back in there and the detent and the ball. So we'll probably put a little bit of stuff and grab that ball. Sure. Just put a little bit of grease on here around that O-ring. Well, we're gonna have to put that in from the other side. I remember this a little yeah. Allen screw on the other side. So we'll do that after. There's a little, here guys, there's a plug right here on this. This is where your spring and uh, detent ball go for the shifter. There's a little Allen key here that plugs it. We're gonna take that out. I didn't take that out before. I just pulled it out from the other way and that the ball came out. So we're gonna put the shifter, the shifter key back in there and then put the spring and put the ball, the spring and put that plug back in there. All right, like I was saying, there's an Allen key plug right here for your detent. Currently unscrewing it. What size is this Allen wrench? See what size that is I got here. But there's the plug. It's a 316th Allen wrench. 316 fits that. So here's our shifter, here's our gear set. We're gonna put our shift forks back, right back in there where they go. We're gonna slide this right back down. Hopefully. Make sure the bottom bushings are correct. Yep, got a seal over here, gotta make sure that seats. And the bushings have flat sides. So the bushings need to be, the flats need to face down. Now that's in there all the way down. All right, so we just flipped the case half with the shifter and the input shaft. We put on top of the differential. Now we're gonna flip it over. And then take it back apart. Take the this lower cat half back off. And now our differential is still together. And it's in this half now. So now we're gonna put our gear sets back, hopefully. This is the, goes over the input shaft. And we need to turn here, Stefan, I need your help. We need to mesh these, all these gears together. Turn the input shaft. There, just like that. That's back in. And now the last set. And then on this set, it's got the bu these bushings have a key or a, a stop on the one side you can see. And if in the case, well, not on this half, on that half, they go a certain way. Okay. So we need to make sure that these are orientated the correct way. I'm gonna face them straight up. So, Looking at this, this one needs to face towards me. See here? This one needs to face towards me. It needs to lay down like that. And this one needs to face towards you guys. Like that. You can see the corresponding indentations in the case right here. That's where those, those sit, right here. So this is all back together. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna re-clean 
the mating surfaces on both with some acetone. And then I think we're gonna use a little bit of Lucas and sort of just kind of pre-loop these gears. Not, we're not gonna fill the case. Well, we might fill the case or put a decent amount in, but there's a fill plug on here, a rubber fill plug, which I know is a bear to get out. So we might just fill the case first. But we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we went ahead and put in a combination of 80, 90 gear oil and Lucas stabilizer. We filled about, it says to put 16 ounces in on a chart that I found, but we, we filled it about maybe a third about the, of, the case, of the case here. And I'm just spinning the input shaft by hand. Everything seems to turn smooth. There's no binding. The bull gear is turning. So we're gonna go with that. Stefan already wiped down the mating surfaces on both. There's the other case half right there. We're getting ready to go with some Forma gasket. The instructions on this say to put it on both surfaces, thin and spread it around so it's basically just a thin layer on both surfaces. So we gotta put it on this one and that one and we'll put it together. Stefan's gonna read the instructions more because my eyes can't really see the fine print. Or we can just read the back of this. That's better. But we're gonna get this thing sealed up. We're gonna put it back together. See you in a minute. Now you don't want to put gasket maker through here because you got your oil channels that lets the grease get the gear oil get all up around the axle shaft. Just want to go around the perimeter and then around your bolt holes. So we got both sides with a thin layer of this RTV. It's definitely tacked up. And now hopefully we didn't forget anything. And we're just going to side put it together. Now grab that cardboard right there. So this is how it goes. This one goes towards the back. Oh my dear. A sign. Stefan, if you would grab a three eighths on a socket wrench. All right, we got this thing upside down guys, because it was the easier way to take it apart. I mean, put it back together and take it apart. So we're holding the diagram upside down while we're putting the bolts back in. And this stuff, once it becomes tacky and you put it together, you tighten it right away. So before we can flip this, I wanna have all the fasteners in there and I'm using an extension and a 3A socket and just making them finger tight. So that way when we flip it, there ain't no oil gonna get between our new surfaces that we just had the gasket made here. We don't want no leaks on this thing. We got all the bolts in this thing, all the way around. I went in a cross pattern, kind of started from the center and worked my way outwards. And then everything is snug, it's not torqued. We're still trying to find the torque specs on this, but they're very snug. Um, next thing we're gonna do is put the ball in the spring for the shift detent back in. Stefan's got the ball, he's gonna drop it down the hole right there. Now we're gonna put the spring in behind it and the plug. Now this plug was about flush with the top of the case. Maybe it was down more, I don't know. We don't want it too tight. Yeah. Put it right about there. And now we should be able to yeah we got detent so there's 
that's probably fifth gear right there. Fourth. Oh, hard. Fourth. Third, second, first, neutral, reverse. And I can shift, I can turn my input shaft. And my axles, everything's free in there, I can feel it, and my axles are spinning. Not that fast going. Both are spinning, like they should be. Really, really so. So that should be fifth gear right there. Yep. Don't See how fast they're turning? I'm just input by hand, and they're spinning a lot faster. Does this is doing a lot faster? So that's it. All right, this thing's back together. We're gonna find the torque spec online. I don't know what it is. If I find it, I'll let you know. But right now, these things are like, just by feel, they're pretty tight. They're, they're not monkey tight. I'm not worried about stripping out the aluminum threads or anything, but they're, they're snug. They're, they're definitely tight and they're all about the same. I went through and just click in my mind, right? Click. So they're snug. We're gonna, I gotta flip it over actually and really snug up the bottom too. But other than that, guys, it's almost midnight. It's 11.42. We've been at this all day. Tomorrow, we're going to get up bright and early. We're going to come out here, hopefully get a pulley solution. That's first and foremost. Get this thing put back together. And oh, I'll give you all a little sneak peek. We got tires. 19 inch by nine inch, eight inch rim, Sun F, ATV tires. Mabel's gonna be super excited about this. Anyways, we'll see you tomorrow morning. All right guys, it's the next day. It's beautiful outside. It's about 50 degrees, perfectly bright and sunny. Mabel Grace is in bed. We're probably not gonna see her out here for a little while. We were all up super late last night. And uh, it's kind of like the relationship in the Dukes of Hazard, where I'm Cooter, she's Daisy. She just brings her stuff in here for me to fix and I do it with a smile on my face, ear to ear. Now, last night, we got this thing locked up. The first thing we're gonna do is try this seven inch pulley and see how it's gonna go in the relationship to the tractor in there if we have much modifications we would have to do. Otherwise, we're on a time crunch. I'm gonna have to go and get another pulley the same size as the one I ruined yesterday. I'm not sure what size that is. It's probably eight inch bare minimum. But we're gonna see about this getting fit in there and we'll get back to you in a minute. 